Right. I think it's very much a fundamentally driven market, the way that we, we look at our price forecast uh, and the way that the street looks at the price forecast. I mean, certainly, um, you know, Russia poses a very large asymmetric upside risk to the market. Um, and I think what's really important, though, is when you look at the fundamental balance, when you look how low inventories have grinded down, when you look at how much lower OPEX fair capacity has been relative to the past several years, generally speaking, directly, we think that prices should be higher. I think what's also really important, Will, is this idea that we've all been waiting for demand to get weaker because of this recession that we're all seemingly waiting for. I think what's key here is that demand hasn't been particularly strong over recent months, but it certainly hasn't been weak. And I think what's really important is when we look at the multi-year cycle here, supply is going to be really tight because we've had 10 years of underinvestment in this market. And as a function of that, supply tightness and demand, you know, doesn't have to be overly strong. It just can't be weak. And as a function of that, we think that the next cycle is going to be um, pretty strong. Just in, just in the short term, we've seen a significant cold snap hitting both the United States and the EU. In terms of how that impacts price, uh, I, I, I want to get your, your thoughts on that because on one hand you could yeah. have the suggestion that it impacts mobility quite considerably and that obviously ameliorates demand to some extent, but at the same, you're talking, on the other hand I should say, you're talking about heating and the, the shortages that we're already seeing and then increased energy use. So how does, how does that factor, if we were to see these conditions playing through right. for the next couple of months? Yeah, no, this is this is really important, right? Because when you look at certain places like Europe, diesel, heat for, for heating purposes, I mean, there's a lot of concern about what energy security looks like in Europe going through this winter, given everything that we've been talking about with Russia, Ukraine, et cetera. I think the key idea here is the warmer start to winter has bode re- relatively well for Europe so far. But like you like you mentioned, you're getting colder temperatures now this is really gonna boost heating demand. And this is really going to be key to watch the interaction between natural gas prices in Europe and also oil prices, because natural gas prices, if they go too high again, what you're going to see is an incremental amount of pickup in oil demand because of switching from natural gas to oil for for heating demand. So there's a lot of different dynamics. I think that weather generally could play into the mix. Um, I think what's really key so far is our, our real-time mobility trends suggest that um, demand for travel, discretionary travel in Europe has tapered off quite aggressively over the course of the past several months, whereas in the U.S. it still continues to be fairly strong uh, at the moment, just given some of the real-time trends that we're seeing.